Now, I'll be bringing out quickly on the mimics of solid LCIS versus low-grade ECIS, LCIS with necrosis versus comedo, and pleomorphic LCIS. This is a problem with high-grade DCIS. Sometimes it occurs with collagenous spherulosis and looks like ribriform. And when it is associated with sclerosing adenosis, where it resembles an ILC. So quick run through on some of these mimics, and we'll just see them in detail. Now, the first mimic is a solid LCIS. This is a solid LCIS. You can see clearly that the cells have proliferated maximally to fill the lobules. They're quite monomorphic. There are no residual spaces. Now, I know most of you would say this is LCIS, but if I were to say, why not a low-grade DCIS? How would you go further and proceed? Look at the cell polarity. Look at microacini ductal differentiation. In this, there is lobulocentricity. The whole lobule has expanded, which will not happen in a DCIS. In DCIS, the cells tend to be more polygonal. They have distinct cytoplasmic borders. Those intracytoplasmic targetoid inclusions will be absent in DCIS. You will not have what is called a signet ring morphology, as we'll discuss later. And if you still can't make up your mind, you might want to use ecadherin. Here we are. Ecadherin is always present in ductal lesions, very nicely brought out, and it's absent in lobular lesions. So this is a low grade uh, low grade dcis on the right and an lcis on the left it's absent and even if it has an occasional positivity which is focal it will be of a very minimal in intensity now once again let's look at this lesion again the lobule is expanded there is an element of some necrosis so many of us would wonder is this comedo necrosis or is it some form of LCIS. DCIS or LCIS? There is comedo kind of necrosis, but the cells are quite monomorphic. Higher power view showing the necrosis, but the cells being very monomorphic. When you look at the individual cells, if you find that there is a greater degree of nu nuclear pleomorphism and the spaces are expanded by dehesive population, with central necrosis, but you can see the intracytoplasmic vacuoles that you notice here. You know that this is all LCIS, which at times can show you a form of central necrosis. Here we will not look at the shape, size, put all the features together, discohesiveness, trying to run away from the neighbors, and then consider all the features. What about LCIS with necrosis, as I've told you? Now, look at these two. This is such a monomorphic population. Here, the cells are much, much larger, more pleomorphic, angulated. They are not running away from each other. They are sticking to each other. So this is a comedo DCIS, while this is an LCIS with necrosis. There is a florid ductocentric LCIS with marked expansion filling the duct, and here we call it central necrosis. We don't use the word comedo. So there is a complete discordance with the amount of necrosis and the nuclear ATP. This is very monomorphic. While here, there is necrosis, this is comedo necrosis, and there is nuclear pleomorphism. So just some high pass to show you that we've confirmed this on an e -caterin. Cell types are monomorphic. There is necrosis but there are intracytoplasmic vacuoles. The cells are nicely separated from each other. The last of the variants of LCIS, the pleomorphic LCIS. Here, there can be nuclear pleomorphism, but and it can be as much as two to threefold. There will be mu nuclear membrane irregularity. There may be even prominent nucleoli. You may find mitosis with central necrosis and calcification but there will be clear spaces around the cells. So what I want to bring to your light is those intracytoplasmic 
may uh, vacuoles may even give a signaturing appearance sometimes you may even have an apocrine lcs so don't take anything this is a high power view showing you signaturing because of intracytoplasmic vacuoles similarly here it looks absolutely like a signaturing cell carcinoma because there is a form of lcis called the signaturing site and th this is mostly composed of signaturing cells and it can be confused sometimes with a high it, it is classified as a very high grade form of lcis and is frequently usually associated with an invasive lobular carcinoma then the pleomorphic lcis versus the dcis ex with versus a high grade please uh, excuse me for this mistake it's a high grade dcis they often lose even e cadherin expression when they when they are uh, of the pleomorphic variant then you realize that this pleomorphic variant shows a risk for breast carcinoma and when you are in doubt tell your clinician that it is better to err on the try side of a pleomorphic lcis and treat it as a dcis and go ahead with surgical excision to achieve histologically negative margin and eradicate the focus of a microcalcification so this can be a very very challenging diagnosis and even e cadherin may not help at times when it is uh, lcis is associated with collagenous spherulosis it will be like spherical deposits eosinophilic hyaline material basophilic mucinous matrix which is enveloped and stretched out myoepithelial cells so this is not this is telling you that this is collagenous spherulosis and it may superimpose on the tool just to give you a figure here you have collagenous spherulosis discohesion of proliferating cells stretched out myoepithelial cells around the circumference of these spherules while this is a cribriform dcis so this is very punched out though the cell is very monomorphic so every time you need to keep all these things in mind if you are still in doubt go ahead with the p63 which will highlight the nuclei circumferentially in a rim of cytoplasm in case of lcis or if you are looking at myoepithelial cells lcis within a sclerosing adenosus may mimic an ilc you will have cords and compressed tubules at the periphery by lcis and it may completely look like an ilc which i will explain to you and here you are seeing how pseudo infiltrative it is but when you use calponin it's showing you myoepithelial markers so this is nothing but this is not an ilc but just a sclerosing adenosus this is the pagetoid spread it can show and it can go beneath the ductal epithelium giving a virtual clover leaf appearance and resemble what is called pagetoid growth all these kind of pitfalls can occur especially when we don't have absolutely wonderful sections with entire uh the entire lesion coming to us sometimes you may not see distension you might not find the features of lcis even when you apply e cadherin it may not work in referred cases where you will have a poor antigen retrieval the points whenever you are in trouble please use e cadherin which will uh, be useful as an adjunct p120 not easily available but documented in textbook as a positive cytoplasmic stain for lobular carcinomas so you know that lobular lesions are negative for e cadherin but positive for cytoplasmic positivity for p120 which often there as a control to you in normal ducts so we finished with lcis and all the mimics of lcis 